What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Supercoach video. This is the post JL2, JLT round two uh, update video. This video, I'm just going to basically go through um, a list of players uh, that I'm looking at putting in the final team. And I'm going to go through their JLT scores and sort of just touch base on a few of them. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a long list, so I'm going to go through it pretty quick. Um, so starting the back line, I'm looking at Rory Laird. Um, JLT, the first game, he got 94 on 80% game time. Um, the second one was 82 on 84% game time. So, you know, he kind of picks up where he left off last year. Pretty consistent numbers. Um, so, yeah, as a premium backman, he's a potential uh, pick. Uh, going down to Sydney, you got Jake Lloyd. Um, he's probably my main one that I'm looking at. Um, I know he's expensive, but he kind of just... Uh, yeah, I think the um, where the fuck am I? I think the kick in rule just suits him to a T. Uh, if I can find him here somewhere, fucking hell. Oh, he's right at the top. I can fuck. I'm an idiot. So first game he got seventy five off, uh, sixty five percent game time. Then he didn't play in the second game. Um, yeah, uh, you know that that's they're probably keeping him, making sure he doesn't get injured. Um, but yeah, 65% game time for 75. That's pretty decent. Uh, GWS, so Zach Williams, who basically has been a lock for me um, right from the start. 82 in the first game off 53% game time, and then he didn't play in the second one. Uh, just got to keep an eye on him with injuries. He came off in the first game, so that could have just been a precaution. So we'll keep an eye on him. Uh, sticking with GWS and Whitfield, um, whereabouts is he? Yeah, so 93 in the first game of 86% game time and 86 in the second one of 83%. Good numbers there for the amount of game time he got. Um, yeah, so he, he's a really potential uh, pick. Uh, Cade Simpson from Carlton. So with um, Doherty going down again, he's going to play the exact same role as last year. 62 in the first game off 87%, then 105 in the second one off 87%. So consistent tons out of him is what I'm predicting, When, but he can get those lows. Uh, but yeah, I'd say he will get consistent tons. Um, Shannon Hearn, who I haven't heard a whole lot about um, this sort of super coach season, but again, big numbers, 111 in the first one off 72% and 89 from 87%. Um, he's someone that I've been looking into. Um, another guy, uh, he was a rookie last year who's kind of been, he's p played some good, uh, got some good numbers. This JLT is Ridley from Essendon. Um, Hooker when he's down, he's going to be out for like a month or first four games or something. So Ridley has potential to play that role. Um, and he, he scored well. Uh, if we look, if I can find it, Jordan Ridley, yeah, 97 in the first game of 77% and 94 of the second one for 81%. He kind of plays that defender, runs off the back line, um, intercept marks and stuff. So he's a potential option. And sticking with us, and Aaron Francis is another kind of player like that. 85 in the first game of 73% and 61 the second off the 82%. I was pretty keen on him in the before the like for JLT, but I, I'm probably steering clear of him now. Um, back up to Adelaide, and this fella who's had a lot of pe people talking about him is Brody Smith, 103 off 70 percent and 97 off 73 percent. At his value, he's pretty good. Um, yeah, I, I like the look of Smith to be honest. Um, down to Brisbane, uh, where is he? Alex Witherden. 66 of 63% and 76 of 88%. Um, yeah, for, I, I'm not convinced with him. Um, I see him in a lot of teams, and, you know, he could definitely prove me wrong and, and be that player, but I think I'm going to stick clear of him. Uh, midfields now, Jackson McRae. Um, expensive. Um a lot of people are saying they don't want to spend the money and then wait for his price to drop. Um, I just don't know if it's worth the risk. I know he's 690 grand, 143 in the first game and 104 in the second one. 
for me, is a lock. I've, I've got to spend the money. I'm not convinced. I don't want to wait five rounds and wait for his price to drop. And by that stage, he might have had a couple of 130s, 140s that have won me the game. So, won me the round. So, McCray's in for me. Patrick Cripps, I think he was the first player I picked. Uh, if can't win 10 games, he wins a Brownlow. 124 first game off 86%. 106 in the second off 91%. Um, he's a stoppage king. Plenty of clearances. You, you're mad. You're absolutely mad if you're not picking him. Nat Fife didn't play. Elbow injury. Fucking Ross Lyons said, oh, he was one day away from playing in the JLT game. Ross Lyons a liability to himself. I don't trust him. I don't trust Nat Fife's injuries. He's a no for me. He could very well burn me. He plays unreal against North Melbourne. They got them round one. I just can't do it because I'm worried about injuries. Uh... GWS and Josh Kelly hasn't played or JLT. Small rumors about injuries. GWS just keep everything really close to home. They don't let anything out. J, uh, for me, he's a risk. Um, so I'm not 100% picking him. Stephen Cornelio, however, is almost a lock. 140 in the first game off 82%. 123 off 67, 76% game time. He was a star last year. I think... If Josh Kelly's playing, he gets a tag. Cornelio can run wild. Cornelio is a great pick. Back up to Adelaide. Matt Crouch, great price and great numbers. 110 in the first game for 77%. 155 in the second one for 73%. I don't know. I think Roy Sloan, Sloan will be the one that cops the tag. So Crouch can just run rampant. Um, yeah, I like the look of Crouch for sure. Um, Scotty Pendlebury. Now, this guy... Oh, I liked the look of him late last year, and for that price, 120 in the first game off 73% game time, and 114 in the second one off 77%. Coin went up and about. Pendles has been a star of the game for as long as I can remember. He, when a team's up and about and they've got confidence, players play better. Pendles has got the best skill set in the game, I believe. He's... When he gets the ball, it's like he's the only one on the ground. He just has space and poise and time, and he just makes the right decision, and he just kicks unbelievably, makes the right handballs. Um, I am seriously considering Pendles this year for that price. But staying with Collingwood, adds you Trelaw. Didn't play in the first game. He's been on my mind all preseason. All like been thinking about him. I know he ripped both hammies off his bone last year, but he's had a great preseason. He's fit, and then he plays in his second um JLT game for 128 off 75% game time. Uh, be very hard for me not to picture law, to be very honest. Um, going back to Essendon, Zach Merritt, um, he was great for me last year, and I think he'll do the same thing this year for that price. He didn't play much in the first game, and then the second game he only played the second half, I think. So pretty shit scores, but someone to keep an eye on. Uh, a fellow that I'm not... 100% sold on, but he's had a great couple of games, is Michael Walters, because I'm struggling for that third uh, forward option. 83 off 64% the first game, 81 off 86% in the second. Hang on. No, that's wrong. 86 in the first game off 55, 92 in the second game off 68. Considering him at that third forward option for sure. Uh, GWS again, Taranto, or however you say it. Great price, 481 for mid, 120 in the first off 82%, 96 in the second for off 83%. Seeing him in a lot of teams, he's definitely got a lot to offer and definitely someone to consider. Uh, Joel Selwood, I don't think anyone's going to pick him, but I just fucking love him. Probably the best player to ever pull a Geelong jumper on. Um, I just wanted to talk about him, I just love him. I'm not going to pick him at all, but let's have a look at his numbers. Where are we? Jolly Selwood, first game, 78 off 52%, 153 off 79%. He turned it on against Essendon. He, last year, I think round one, he had a 40-something and kicked a goal. Like, he can pull big numbers, and he's a contested ball fiend. Gets clearances, and I think this 666 is going to rule uh, really suit him. 570 grand. I hope he gets into some teams. He's not getting into mine, but fuck, I love him. Uh, if we go to Melbourne and have a look at Clayton Oliver... Risk injury for sure. 622 grand expensive, but look at them numbers. 127 off 68% and 104 off 82%. He's getting around a lot of teams and he's definitely worth considering. He has that hefty price tag though. For me, I had to go Crips over him at that price. 
Sticking with Melbourne, though, Angus Brayshaw, 526 grand, third in the brown low last year, 111 first game of 69%, 126 uh, off 74%, uh, la, uh, which is, yeah, unreal. He's a great um, option too, I think. Uh, Elliot Yo, great for me last year. Um, 585 grand, 91 for 74%, 74 off 72%. Their midfield is really solid. Um, he's definitely going to get plenty of the ball, and for that price tag, he's pretty hard to go past. Um Sticking with West Coast, Dom Sheed. Now, he's had an unbelievable um, JLT. 144 off the first game for 71%. 134 in the second for 80%. And look at that price, 394. If you look at his his finals games in the last couple of games of the year last year, he had really good numbers. When he got drafted, he was a hot, he was highly talked about being having like a really high ceiling to perform. And this year could be that year. So, I like him. I really do. Uh, the Bont, Western Bulldogs, uh, he's a star. 116 off 88% the first one, 96 off 89%. Currently, he's currently in my hometown as we speak. Uh, the Doggies are in my hometown doing clinics or something. I was just in the car on the way to EB Games and heard him on the radio, so that's pretty cool. Um, that price tag, mad. It's, he kicks goals. He's hard to hard to look past. Uh, Lockie Neal, I mean... I'd say most people are going to have this bloke in his team. 607 grand, 136 on the first one off 92%. 106 off the second one for 85%. He's a star. He's a star at Freo. He's going to be... He, he could have an All-Australian year, to be honest. Um, I really, really like Neil. Uh, back down to the Western Bulldogs. Tom Libertore. I'm, I'm really liking him. Uh... 300 grand, 111 in the first one of 78%, 87 in the second one of 71%. He just looks fit and ready to go. I know people tell you to steer clear of mids, but this year might be the year in the mids, maybe, because there's a lot of good options. I like Libba. Uh, let that one go through to the keeper. Another great pod option. Um, from Geelong is Mitch Duncan because of how consistent he is. He'll average you a hundred. Um, his price is pretty decent. If I can find him, five seventy six, hundred seventy in the first one off eighty three percent, seventy nine in the second one off eighty six percent. I watched that second game. He was kind of just cruising, um, so I wouldn't take that seventy nine much, much. I wouldn't look into that much, but yeah. I, I want to get Mitch Duncan in the side because I, he doesn't make a lot of teams. So, yeah. Um, where are we? are going to go to Richmond. We're going to look at Dusty Martin. 78 in the first one, 64%. 81 in the second one, 65%. For that price, I'm, it's hard to pick him, but I worry because his ceiling is huge. Um, the one rookie I am going to talk about is um, Sam Walsh because, to me, he doesn't even feel like a rookie. He looks set to just, oh, he just looks like he's been playing for years. Where is he? Come on, baby. Uh, I've probably gone past him. I should have my glasses on. Where is he? There he is. 102 in the first one of 80%, 96 in the second one of 84%. If he can get those numbers consistently, you'd nearly just pick him at the start of the year and leave him in your side because they're gutsy numbers. He's a lock. If you don't have him in your side, you need to find a way in. To the rocks, uh, Grundy, um, uh, expensive, but you got to have him, I think. He didn't have the best JLT series, but who cares? Because, to me, he's the second best Ruckman in the league behind Gorn. Uh, Brody Grundy, 94 in the first one of 84%, 85 in the second one of 88%. Pick him. Vice captain him round one because they're playing Geelong and Geelong don't have a ruck. It's their weakest link. They don't have a ruck. Grundy will get 130 easy. Um, so Grundy, Gorn for me is also a lock because Pruce, Pruis or whatever that bloke's name is, isn't going to play round one. And Melbourne are ready to win a flag. They got the best ruckman in the comp. Why would they not play him? Didn't play the first game. Second one, 119 off 86%. Get him in. Expensive. Your two rucks are expensive. Get him in. Todd Goldstein, um, if you don't want to have the two most expensive rucks, ABC to F G H J K L M N O P. where's North Melbourne? 
Um, if you don't have those two expensive rucks, Goldie for me is probably your next best option. 117 in the first one of 62%. Didn't play in the second one, but his price is great. If you don't want the two expensive Ruckmans, get Goldie in. Forwards, I mean, Dangerfield, that's your first pick. 129 of 85%, 128 of 68%. He is fit, strong, fast, everything you need. You have him for sure. Second lock is Isaac Heaney, without a doubt. Um, 104 of 72%, 70 of 57%. He's primed for an all Australian year if I've ever seen someone. So, yeah, get get him in for sure. Tim Kelly, this third f- f- uh, forward option is what's getting me. Um, Tim Kelly is 505 grand, I believe. Uh, 505,000. 43 in the first one and 110 in the second one. He killed in the second one. He can get these numbers, but these ones really worry me, the small percentage numbers. And he's only in his second year. I know he had a great first year, but players really can drop off in the second year. So he he is an option, but I worry about him. Dunkley from the Dogs, he's not for me. I don't think he's going to get the midfield time. Um, 54 in the first game and 107 in that second game, though. That That's going to convince a lot of people. Um, Jack Billings. Is he? He's had a great couple of games. Very likely, Cam Burnia, hundred in the first, eighty in the second. Um, cheap option. Burned everyone last year. Could do it again. And this other guy, who I like and is a cheap option from Brisbane, is Lincoln McCarthy. Hundred five in the first one of seventy seven percent, and seventy five in the second one of seventy seven percent. He is classed as a forward, but he's playing midfield time. Plus, he's a tackle machine. There's a lot of expensive rookies at the moment. That's why I'm looking at these cheap mid options because they're kind of proven to get better scores than your rookies and I'm willing to spend that extra bit of money. So in saying that, we'll have a look at my team currently. Um, so I've got Jake Lloyd, Zach Williams, Brody Smith, Jordan Ridley, uh, Clark Hall, Brandon Burgess. The rookies aren't... We've got to figure that out. Midfield McRae, Cripps, Trelaw, Cornelio, Sheed, Libba, Walsh, and Atkins. Bewley, Val- Valenti, and Gibbons on the pine. Grundy and Gorn is your rucks. Like I said, Vice Captain Grundy, he'll get 130. Forwards, Danger, Heaney, Kelly, Link McCarthy, Setterfield Parker, Schultz Hill. I've said this in many videos. My preferred option here is Chad Wingard, but injury, obviously. I've got 94 grand in the bank where I can find ways to spread that around. Um, like I said, I've got some mid, I've got a lot of mid options, Smith, Smith, uh, Williams, Ridley, Sheed, Libba, McCarthy, but, uh, I'm just, yeah, I'm trying to find value where I can. So yeah, that's the post JLT two uh, round two series. I'll have my final team reveal next week before the season. Um, yeah, so hopefully, hopefully we can get somewhere uh, get to locking down the team soon and have yeah something to to get ready for the round but yeah thanks for watching guys and yeah see you in the next one